when you know the two parent functions for this chapter, the square root and the cube root function, then you should also be able to graph them. If we translate, stretch, or compress, or reflect the square root and cube root graph. So the general equation for a radical function is shown here. And just like usual, um, when we have a number that's attached to the x, we call that the horizontal translation, and we it is horrible. The horizontal translation is going to have the opposite sign from what we expect when we first look at it because of that negative sign in the radical. Um, and then we have a vertical translation, which is wonderful and does exactly what we expect. The vertical translation has the same um, sign as the direction that we expect it to travel. And then there's the number in front. That number in front is either a stretch, if its magnitude is bigger than 1, um, or a compression, if its magnitude is less than 1. Um, or, or it could also, and or, it could also be a reflection if A is a negative value. So A does all three of those things, depending on what value you have for A. Um, this is our first example. This example is a square root graph, which is how I knew that this dotted line was the parent function. Um, there is some translation that's happened to our graph. Because of the plus 3, this graph has gone left 3. And because of the plus 1, this graph has gone up 1. So the point that I translate for the square root graph is 0, 0. So I'm going to move that 0, 0 point left 3 and up 1. This is my new point that's like 0, 0. And then this graph also has a, um, it also has a um, stretch because that 2 is there. The function, the parent function, goes up one when I go right one. On the the new function, if I go right one, I'm going to go up one times two because that's my stretch. So my new point would be right there, and that's how my stretch gets worked in. And then if I sketch the um, curve after that. I just want to make sure I'm mimicking the shape of the parent. For this new curve, the domain is going to be, instead of from 0, 0, 0 to infinity, this new domain, the furthest left-hand point is here at negative 3. So the domain is going to be from negative 3 to infinity. The range is going to be the lowest point, or the wrangle. The range is going to be the lowest point the y-coordinate of the lowest point is 1. So the range is going to be from 1 to infinity. Um, so that's the square root function. Um, this example is a cube root graph. And I can tell that it's a cube root graph because of the index is a 3. So that's why the parent function is the one that I graphed here, because that's the parent function for the cube root graph. Um, before I can graph this one, I need to make sure that it looks like this format. I need to get the A out in front. I would like the X to have no number in front of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this equation, and I notice that 8X plus 16 has a GCF. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take that 8 out of the 8X plus 16. So I'm looking at, if I do 8x divided by 8, I would get x. And if I do 16 divided by 8, I would get 2. So I haven't really changed anything yet. I just rewrote this 8x plus 16 so that there's an 8 in front of the parentheses. Notice that if I distributed, which I'm not going to do, but if I did distribute, I'd get back to where I started. I don't want to be back where I started. That's why I'm not going to distribute. Um, if I rewrite this a little bit, it's a cube root, so I can take this pro I can take the 8 
out. I can say, well, there are eight, if I break it up, eight is four times two, um, four is two times two, so eight has three twos, so I can put eight two outside. Or maybe you know that eight is a perfect cube. And I don't really need those parentheses inside of the radical because there's kind of automatic grouping that happens inside of the radical. Um, so now that I've finished rewriting my equation, now I can see that I have a translation of left 2 and up 2. So my point zero zero is going to go left 2, up 2. And my new point will be right there at 2, negative 2, 2. Um, and then I also know that this graph has a stretch. So on the parent function, this graph goes up 1 after, when it goes right 1. But my new function, if I go right 1, is going to go up 2. And then the other point that gets stretched is negative 1, negative 1. That one goes down 1, but my new function is going to go down 2 because I'm multiplying by my stretch. So my graph has the same shape with that translation and stretch built in. So same stretch, same shape as the parent, just stretched out away from the x-axis. Um, because this is a cube root function, the domain is going to be all real numbers, and so is the range. This last one has some fractions, but don't let the fractions scare you. We're going to do the same process. We're going to say, well, inside of that square root, I notice that I have a GCF of 1 fourth. So I'm going to take 1 fourth out of both terms inside of the square root. And when I take 1 fourth out of x, I have x minus 1. You can check that answer by distributing the 1 fourth. And then I can take the square root of 1 fourth because I can take the square root of 1 and I can take the square root of 4. And those have nice answers, but I can't take the square root of x minus 1. So that's going to stay under the square root sign. My new function becomes g of x equals 1 half square root of x minus 1 minus 3. So then what I have in the end is I have, and I'm not going to use this color because I can't see it on my graph, I have a translation of right 1 and down 3. So my 0, 0 point is going to go right 1, down 3, and become a new point down here. Um, and then I also have a vertical stretch of, well, it's a compression actually because it's less than 1. I have a compression of a half. So normally my point goes up 1 when I go right. This time I'm going to go right 1, and I'm only going to go up a half. And so my new graph is going to look like this. It's like the parent function, same shape as the parent function, but it is compressed down. The domain for this graph is going to be from 1 to infinity because that's our furthest left-hand point, and there is a point there. The range is going to be from negative 3 to infinity. So that skill that you just completed for these three problems is graphing a translated, transformed radical function. Um, the next section is about identifying what was the radical function before the transformation happened. I'm just going to do one example of these. Um, so this one, I know right away by looking at this graph, I know that the parent function is the square root of x, and I know that because this function has that general shape. And then when I write my transformation, my new function, I don't right away know what a is, but I can look at the point that got translated, so that, that point that usually is at 0, 0, 
and I can use that to figure out what H and K were. This graph went left 5, so it's going to have an X plus 5 in it, and it also went down 4, so it's going to have a minus 4 in it. To figure out what A is, I just use any of the other points that I know are on the graph. So I'm going to use 4, negative 1. Um, if I use 4, negative 1, I'm going to fill that in as x equals 4 and y or f of x equals negative 1. So we're going to have negative 1 equals a, we still don't know a, and then we're going to fill in 4 plus 5 minus 4. I can do 4 plus 5, that's 9, and it's grouped inside of this radical sign, so that's actually the next thing I'm going to do. I get the square root of 9 minus 4. I can take the square root of 9, and at this point it's just a linear equation like any other linear equation that we've ever solved. We're going to add 4, and we get 3 equals 3a, and we're going to divide by 3, so now we know that a is 1 which means that in the end, the equation for this function graphed here is f of x equals 1 times the square root of x plus 5 minus 4. I didn't write the 1, but you can if that makes you happy. Um, this is the radical function that's graphed here. All right, so your two skills are going from an equation to a graph and from a graph to an equation. Thank you so much. Bye.